Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today it's called triangle, and it's a medium level dynamic programming problem. And so let's get started here. So essentially you're just given a two dimensional matrix, um, but it's actually interesting where the, uh, basically the length of the rows don't always match and they kind of perform this kind of triangular shape here. And so basically like the length of the rows kind of go length of one, then two, three, and so forth. So they just increase by one uh, with each kind of row. And so basically what we're wanting to do is this is a minimization problem. And so we're gonna wanna go from top to bottom and find basically the shortest path to get there or the, the kind of minimum cost to get there. And so if you kind of view these numbers as like costs, you can say that, okay, I wanna kinda of go down this path that has this minimum cost. And in this case, it ends up being, so we go from two, we start at two, then we choose three, and then we hop over to five, and then we go to one. And this path here lends itself to a total cost of one. So you just take the sum of that path, and that's basically uh, what we're going to want to return here. All right, and so in this case, well, you can also have negative numbers. And well, if there's only one value here to get from top to bottom, you just wanna add that so it ends up being negative 10 here. All right, and so essentially, the reason why this is kind of a, a dynamic programming problem is you can kind of format it in a way so that you can reuse certain decisions that you've maybe made before. And that's because, well, you'll end up doing a lot of repeated work here because there's multiple ways that you can get to five, let's say. And from five, you maybe want to make that decision on how you wanna move forward many different times. And so you can get to five by either starting at two, going to three, and then choosing five, or you can get to five by saying, let's start at two, go to four, and then go to five. And the reason why this is repeated work as once you go past five, you'll constantly having to make this decision of, okay, do I wanna to go to one or eight? So all the possible paths forward from five, you'll have to do kind of that repeated work for each iteration getting to five. All right, so I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, but essentially, if we wanna map out our decision tree, uh, basically what it's gonna end up looking like is we start at two, and then basically we have two different choices. We can either go to the, say two, which is index zero, you can either choose to go to index uh, zero again on the next level, or on the next level, let's go to index basically zero plus one, or i plus one, which is obviously just one here. So that ends up being two or four in this case. All right, and so then once we get to these levels, they also have decisions. And so basically now we're at looking at the next level. So this is level zero. Now this is level one. And now we're at level, and this is like an L here, level uh, two. And so now when we're looking at level two, when we're at this step, say if we chose two, we can either look at um, I equals zero or I equals one. And so I equals zero is six. And then I equals one is five. But when we're at four, since four is at index uh, one here, we can then look at, once again, index one, which is five, or at i plus one, which is seven. All right, so basically at each iteration, there's going to be two decisions or two possible paths, which is either the current index that we're at or the current index uh, plus one, essentially. All right, and so it's very easy to convert this into a top-down memoization approach, which yields itself to like O of N uh, squared time and space complexity, uh, like so. And so that's basically um, this here. So typically whenever you do a top-down approach, and I'll show you after how to do the bottom up, um, we will define the DP such that we're at index I. And so we're gonna return at here and so typically you want to cache this so let's just throw this in a cache and so you want to look at okay what's the base case well the base case is once we reach 
the end here. So that's okay if i is then greater or equal to the length of our triangle, or let's just place this. I like using array. It's the length of the array. Um, but once again, this is a two-dimensional array, so we'll also want to be keeping track of what the current level is as well. So these will both be starting at zero. And so if the index is out of the bounds for this particular level, then we'll want to just kind of return zero uh, and propagate that answer upwards. But we'll also want to check, okay, and, or we want to make sure that, okay, is our level out of bounds as well? And so we just check, okay, if the level is greater or equal to the length or the number of rows in our array, we also want to check that. Otherwise, we're just going to return the two possible paths that we're going to do and naturally want to do a minimization of it. And so we want to go to the next level and we can either stay at the current index or we can choose to go down to the next level and increase uh, the index by one. And essentially we're just adding to our array, um, which is at index L and at index I. It says that this is just the current value that we have, but this is okay moving forward, which path do we want to uh, go down? So that works, and if it computes here, success. But you can see that it has very low time and space complexity. So let's go ahead and we'll do the bottom-up approach to save on time and space, actually. And so what this looks like is generally you want to convert that kind of implicit um, memoization that we're doing to a very explicit array here. And so that looks like this, where it's basically the uh, length of our array uh, plus one here. And so we're going to want to return the result of this uh, at the index zero. And so we're going to go from bottom up. And so we're going to reach the very top and kind of propagate the shortest path upwards. And so instead, why don't we actually just set this to be equal to um, n for n in our array for the last row. So basically, we're going to pre-fill our DP array uh, with the bottommost row. So that's what it basically is. So the bottommost row will be pre-filled um, with those bottom values. And so from here, we're just going to say, OK, why don't we iterate from uh, bottom up? So we want to go through for i or for every level in the range, and we're going to start from not the bottom level, but the, the level above the bottom. And we're going to basically move level uh, each level upwards. And so once again, we'll go like this. And we'll say, OK, let's start at the end of our array, minus 2 to get the level um, above the lowest level. And we just iterate backwards. And so from this point, then we want to say, OK, well, we also want to traver traverse through every single column. And so this will be like for i in the range. And we just want to go through column by column, so just the length of the array. And this is non-inclusive. And so from this point, we basically have those two decisions that we can go down. And so that's OK. Do we want to look at the current index or the index over? And so we just say, OK, the, the DP at this particular index will be equal to the minimization of, well, um, itself and basically the um, path next to it that you can also go down, so i plus 1, that i plus 1. So I think this makes sense. Let me just think for a second. But as you can see, we aren't actually adding any numbers. We're only propagating the bottommost row. So we want to also be including these different numbers as we move past this, past this point. And so we want to be using numbers within our matrix here. And so we're just going to be adding at this particular level, like so, uh, this particular value that we're currently at as well. So let's go ahead and try running that. Oh, index out of range. So let's think for a second. Uh, So at i, oh, so basically 
we want to only be so because every single row can have varying um, number of columns we want to consider that so when we're at a particular level we only want to consider the columns within uh, that rows kind of column range and so we can do that by just saying okay let's grab the length of the or the number of columns at this particular level looks good and success so that's o of n time complexity and o of n space complexity uh, using this bottom-up approach so i hope that helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms thanks for watching